The headlines. The issues impacting you. All on This Week in Cincinnati. On 9 in Your Side. Welcome back. This morning on This Week in Cincinnati, we're looking at the proposed $48 million Cincinnati school levy. Joining me is my colleague, WCPO education reporter Bob Driehaus, and we're talking with Cincinnati school board member Eve Bolton and the president of COAST, the coalition opposed to additional spending and taxes, Brad Beckett. And uh, we were in the middle of a discussion. Bob, you had a follow-up question for Eve. Mm -hmm. Eve, um, there's been a lot of focus in your surveys, I know, uh, of parents saying we want to work on neighborhood schools um, and I know there are a lot of problems uh, that seem somewhat un un intractable sometimes what what does this levy what what are you going to do with this money to really move the needle in improving neighborhood schools well as you know especially in the last decade Cincinnati public has been in the top ranking of all of the major urban uh, centers in the state of Ohio and indeed our graduation rate's been on the climb all the way up to I think 74 percent now we've got ACT scores at the national level even with having a hundred percent of our kids taking the ACT test but the big issue for us and the thing we hear and it's a good Cincinnati thing and that is that we want our neighborhood schools to reflect the neighborhood and we want them to be as high achieving as possible and so we have with a wonderful administration and to kind of develop something called Vision 2020, which over the next three years, all of our neighborhood schools will have a refocus in programming. For example, in my neighborhood, uh, uh, Pleasant Hill Academy is an environmental science school. We have two art schools uh, that will be focused, and that will be in Northside and, and Kennedy Heights. We have a, a Taft uh, school. Uh, Hayes Porter is going to be a high-tech school. And then we have uh, Westwood and also... Um, uh, Rothenburg are going to be entrepreneurial schools. So it's an attempt to kind of, if you will, give a focus, a program focus, get some more energy, and also involve the neighborhood in a full participation. And we're very excited about it. And the other piece that we want to say about our neighborhood schools is that it is the backbone of our, of our community and the backbone, if you will, of what we do in Cincinnati Public. And that's one of the reasons, too, we also have uh, 44 of our 55 schools are community learning centers, which actually leads the world. And we have 23 uh, school-based health systems. And all of our schools have mental health services, both private and public. But there's just a, li a little bit more to do with the littlest people. Well, uh, I want to follow up and let Brad respond to that. Brad, my question to you is, um, part, of, part of this levy is the preschool promise, and how would Coast propose that we close that gap between children who can afford preschool and those who cannot? I think there's certainly no doubt that getting to the children and heading off uh, where they're heading in life can definitely produce positive outcomes for them. I personally have worked in welfare reform. I've seen it if you can get to the kids. But from our perspective, this is about asking taxpayers for more money. This is about, once again, going to the taxpayers. And quite frankly, being the uh, top of the bottom is certainly nothing to brag about. So I think CPS needs to show some results, show, continue to show that they are improving before they come ask taxpayers for more money. But as far as proposing an alternative to the preschool plan, I think the plan sounds great. They have the, their motives and their hearts are in the right place, but their hands are on someone else's wallet. Okay, I'm going to give you each 30 seconds. Eve, your elevator speech, 30 seconds. This is what is needed for our children and the community and the further economic development and workforce development, starting at the very youngest kid and going all the way through high school and into college. I would also suggest that we are leveraging what the strengths and the assets we have. So this is the most cost-effective effort to bring preschool to every child whose family wants it. And if we invest in preschool now, we show results of it. Usually for every dollar invested in preschool, it runs as much as $4 on the return. Okay, I'm going to let Brad talk. This isn't about the preschool promise. This is about a failed school district once again coming to taxpayers and asking for more money, especially in light of the report card they just received yesterday. So, Carol, we're basically saying to taxpayers, vote no on 44, send a strong message to the school district, encourage them to continue the reforms they've started, uh, g get Josh Mandel's checkbook, open your books up even more, show taxpayers how you're spending the money, and then come back and ask for more money. All That's right. Thank you for. both very Thank much you. for joining in this discussion. Thank you, Bob Driehaus. Thanks, Carol. And we have much more ahead on this week in Cincinnati, including a look at where the presidential race stands in the tri-state and the shift in the polls. Stay with us. The people, the headlines, the issues impacting you. All on This Week in Cincinnati on 9 in Your Side.